Gautama Buddha c. 563-480 c. 483-400 BCE, also known as Siddhartha Gautama Siddhartha Gautama in Sanskrit or Siddhartha Gautama Siddhartha Gautama in Pali, Shakyamuni i.e. Sage of the Shakyas. Buddha, or simply the Buddha, after the title of Buddha, was a monk sramana, mendicant, and sage, on whose teachings Buddhism was founded. He is believed to have lived and taught mostly in the northeastern part of ancient India sometime between the 6th and 4th centuries BCE. Gautama taught a middle way between sensual indulgence and the severe asceticism found in the Sramana movement common in his region. He later taught throughout other regions of eastern India such as Magadha and Kosala. Gautama is the primary figure in Buddhism. He is believed by Buddhists to be an enlightened teacher who attained full Buddhahood and shared his insights to help sentient beings end rebirth and suffering. Accounts of his life, discourses and monastic rules are believed by Buddhists to have been summarized after his death and memorized by his followers. Various collections of teachings attributed to him were passed down by oral tradition and first committed to writing about 400 years later. In Vaishnava Hinduism, the historic Buddha is considered to be an avatar of the Hindu god Vishnu. Of the ten major avatars of Vishnu, Vaishnavites believe Gautama Buddha to be the ninth and most recent incarnation. Historical Siddhartha Gautama Scholars are hesitant to make unqualified claims about the historical facts of the Buddha's life. Most people accept that the Buddha lived, taught, and founded a monastic order during the Mahajanapada era during the reign of Bimbisara c. 558 c. 491 BCE, or c. 400 BCE, the ruler of the Magadha Empire, and died during the early years of the reign of Ajatasatru, who was the successor of Bimbisara, thus making him a younger contemporary of Mahavira, the Jain Tirthankara. While the general sequence of birth, maturity, renunciation, search, awakening and liberation, teaching, death, is widely accepted, there is less consensus on the veracity of many details contained in traditional biographies, the times of Gautama's birth and death are uncertain. Most historians in the early 20th century dated his lifetime as c. 563 BCE to 483 BCE. More recently his death is dated later, between 411 and 400 BCE, while at a symposium on this question held in 1988, the majority of those who presented definite opinions gave dates within 20 years either side of 400 BCE for the Buddha's death. These alternative chronologies, however, have not been accepted by all historians. <laughs> Historical context. The evidence of the early texts suggests that Siddhartha Gautama was born into the Shakya clan, a community that was on the periphery, both geographically and culturally, of the eastern Indian subcontinent in the 5th century BCE. One of his usual names was Sakamuni or Sakamuni, sage of the Shakyas. It was either a small republic, or an oligarchy, and his father was an elected chieftain, or oligarch. According to the Buddhist tradition, Gautama was born in Lumbini, now in modern-day Nepal, and raised in the Shakya capital of Kapilvasta, which may have been either in what is present-day Tilorakot, Nepal or Piprawa, India. He obtained his enlightenment in Bodh Gaya, gave his first sermon in Sarnath, and died in Kushinagar. Apart from the Vedic Brahmins, the Buddha's lifetime coincided with the flourishing of influential Sramana schools of thought like Ahivika, Karvaka, Jainism, and Ajnana. Brahmahala Sutta records 62 such schools of thought. In this context, a sramana refers to one who labors, toils, or exerts themselves for some higher or religious purpose. It was also the age of influential thinkers like Mahavira, Purana Kasapa, Makali Gosala, Ahita Kesakambali, Pakuta Kakayana, and Sanjaya Baladaputta, as recorded in Samanyafala Sutta, whose viewpoints the Buddha most certainly must have been acquainted with. Indeed, Sariputta and Magallana, two of the foremost disciples of the Buddha, were formerly the foremost disciples of Sanjaya Baladaputta, the skeptic, and the Pali Canon frequently depicts Buddha engaging in debate with the adherents of rival schools of thought. There is also philological evidence to suggest that the two masters, Alara Kalama and Yudhika Ramaputta, were indeed historical figures and they most probably taught Buddha two different forms of meditative techniques. Thus, Buddha was just one of the many Sramana philosophers of that time. 
In an era where holiness of person was judged by their level of asceticism, Buddha was a reformist within the Sramana movement, rather than a reactionary against Vedic Brahmanism. Historically, the life of the Buddha also coincided with the Achaemenid conquest of the Indus Valley during the rule of Darius I from about 517 516 BCE. This Achaemenid occupation of the areas of Gandhara and Sindh, which was to last for about two centuries, was accompanied by the introduction of Achaemenid religions, reformed Mazdaism or early Zoroastrianism, to which Buddhism might have in part reacted. In particular, the ideas of the Buddha may have partly consisted in a rejection of the absolutist or perfectionist ideas contained in these Achaemenid religions. Earliest sources No written records about Gautama were found from his lifetime or from the one or two centuries thereafter. In the middle of the 3rd century BCE, several edicts of Ashoka mention the Buddha, and particularly Ashoka's Ruminde Minor Pillar Edict commemorates the emperor's pilgrimage to Lumbini as the Buddha's birthplace. Another one of his edicts, Minor Rock Edict number no. three, mentions the titles of several Dhamma texts, establishing the existence of a written Buddhist tradition at least by the time of the Maurya era. These texts may be the precursor of the Pali Canon. Sakamuni, in also mentioned in the reliefs of Barhat, dated to circa 100 BCE, in relation with his illumination and the Bodhi tree, with the inscription Bhagavato Sakamuni no Bodo, the illumination of the blessed Sakamuni. The oldest surviving Buddhist manuscripts are the Gandharan Buddhist texts, reported to have been found in or around Hatta near Jalalabad in eastern Afghanistan and now preserved in the British Library. They are written in the Gandhari language using the Karasthi script on 27 birch bark manuscripts and date from the 1st century BCE to the 3rd century CE. On the basis of philological evidence, Indologist and Pali expert Oscar von Hinuber says that some of the Pali suttas have retained very archaic place names, syntax, and historical data from close to the Buddha's lifetime, including the Mahaparinibbana Sutta, which contains a detailed account of the Buddha's final days. Hinuber proposes a composition date of no later than 350–320 BCE for this text, which would allow for a true historical memory of the events approximately 60 years prior if the short chronology for the Buddha's lifetime is accepted but also reminds that such a text was originally intended more as hagiography than as an exact historical record of events. Traditional biographies Biographical sources The sources for the life of Siddhartha Gautama are a variety of different, and sometimes conflicting, traditional biographies. These include the Buddhakarita, Lalitavistara Sutra, Mahavasta, and the Nidhanakatha. Of these, the Buddhakarita is the earliest full biography, an epic poem written by the poet Asvaosa in the 1st century CE. The Lalitavistara Sutra is the next oldest biography, a Mahayana, Sarvastivada biography dating to the 3rd century CE. The Mahavasta from the Mahasamgika Lokottaravada tradition is another major biography, composed incrementally until perhaps the 4th century CE. The Dharmaguptaka biography of the Buddha is the most exhaustive, and is entitled the Abhiniskramana Sutra, and various Chinese translations of this date between the 3rd and 6th century CE. The Nidhanakatha is from the Theravada tradition in Sri Lanka and was composed in the 5th century by Buddhahosa. From canonical sources come the Jataka tales, the Mahapadana Sutta, DN 14, and the Acharyabuddha Sutta, MN 123, which include selective accounts that may be older, but are not full biographies. The Jatakas retell previous lives of Gautama as a bodhisattva, and the first collection of these can be dated among the earliest Buddhist texts. The Mahapadana Sutta and Acharyabuddha Sutta both recount miraculous events surrounding Gautama's birth, such as the bodhisattva's descent from the Tasita heaven into his mother's womb. <laughs> Nature of traditional depictions In the earliest Buddhist texts, the Nikayas and Agamas, the Buddha is not depicted as possessing omniscience nor is he depicted as being an eternal transcendent being. 
According to Bhikkhu Anilayo, ideas of the Buddha's omniscience along with an increasing tendency to deify him and his biography are found only later, in the Mahayana sutras and later Pali commentaries or texts such as the Mahavasta. In the Sandaka Sutta, the Buddha's disciple Ananda outlines an argument against the claims of teachers who say they are all-knowing while in the Tevyavakagata Sutta the Buddha himself states that he has never made a claim to being omniscient, instead he claimed to have the higher knowledges abhijna. The earliest biographical material from the Pali Nikayas focuses on the Buddha's life as a sramana, his search for enlightenment under various teachers such as Alara Kalama and his 45 year career as a teacher. Traditional biographies of Gautama generally include numerous miracles, omens, and supernatural events. The character of the Buddha in these traditional biographies is often that of a fully transcendent and perfected being who is unencumbered by the mundane world. In the Mahavasta, over the course of many lives, Gautama is said to have developed supramundane abilities including, a painless birth conceived without intercourse, no need for sleep, food, medicine, or bathing, although engaging in such, in conformity with the world, omniscience, and the ability to, suppress karma. Nevertheless, some of the more ordinary details of his life have been gathered from these traditional sources. In modern times there has been an attempt to form a secular understanding of Siddhartha Gautama's life by omitting the traditional supernatural elements of his early biographies. Andrew Skilton writes that the Buddha was never historically regarded by Buddhist traditions as being merely human. It is important to stress that, despite modern Theravada teachings to the contrary often a sop to skeptical Western pupils, he was never seen as being merely human. For instance, he is often described as having the 32 major and 80 minor marks or signs of a Mahapurusa superman. The Buddha himself denied that he was either a man or a god, and in the Mahaparinibbana Sutta he states that he could live for an eon were he asked to do so. The ancient Indians were generally unconcerned with chronologies, being more focused on philosophy. Buddhist texts reflect this tendency, providing a clearer picture of what Gautama may have taught than of the dates of the events in his life. These texts contain descriptions of the culture and daily life of ancient India which can be corroborated from the Jain scriptures, and make the Buddha's time the earliest period in Indian history for which significant accounts exist. British author Karen Armstrong writes that although there is very little information that can be considered historically sound, we can be reasonably confident that Siddhartha Gautama did exist as a historical figure. Michael Carruthers goes a bit further by stating that the most general outline of birth, maturity, renunciation, search, awakening and liberation, teaching, death, must be true. Biography Conception and birth The Buddhist tradition regards Lumbini, in present-day Nepal to be the birthplace of the Buddha. He grew up in Kapilavasta. The exact site of ancient Kapilavasta is unknown. It may have been either Piprawa, Uttar Pradesh, in present-day India, or Tilorakot, in present-day Nepal. Both places belong to the Sakya territory, and are located only 15 miles apart. Gautama was born as a Kshatriya, the son of Sadodana, an elected chief of the Shakya clan whose capital was Kapilavasta, and who were later annexed by the growing kingdom of Kosala during the Buddha's lifetime. Gautama was the family name. His mother, Maya Mayadevi, Sadodana's wife, was a Kolian princess. Legend has it that, on the night Siddhartha was conceived, Queen Maya dreamt that a white elephant with six white tusks entered her right side, and ten months later Siddhartha was born. As was the Shakya tradition, when his mother Queen Maya became pregnant, she left Kapilavasta for her father's kingdom to give birth. However, her son is said to have been born on the way, at Lumbini, in a garden beneath a sal tree. The day of the Buddha's birth is widely celebrated in Theravada countries as Vesak. Buddha's birthday is called Buddha Purnima in Nepal, Bangladesh, and India as he is believed to have been born on a full moon day. Various sources hold that the Buddha's mother died at his birth, a few days or seven days later. The infant was given the name Siddhartha Pali, Siddhartha, meaning, he who achieves his aim. During the birth celebrations, the hermit seer Asita journeyed from his mountain abode and announced that the child would either become a great king or a great sadhu. By traditional account, this occurred after Siddhartha placed his feet in Asita's hair and Asita examined the birthmarks. 
Suddhodana held a naming ceremony on the fifth day, and invited eight Brahmin scholars to read the future. All gave a dual prediction that the baby would either become a great king or a great holy man. Kandanya, the youngest, and later to be the first arhat other than the Buddha, was reputed to be the only one who unequivocally predicted that Siddhartha would become a Buddha, while later tradition and legend characterized Suddhodana as a hereditary monarch, the descendant of the Suryavansha solar dynasty of Iksvaku Pali, Akaka. .Many scholars think that Suddhodana was the elected chief of a tribal confederacy. Early texts suggest that Gautama was not familiar with the dominant religious teachings of his time until he left on his religious quest, which is said to have been motivated by existential concern for the human condition. The state of the Shakya clan was not a monarchy and seems to have been structured either as an oligarchy, or as a form of republic. The more egalitarian Gana Sangha form of government, as a political alternative to the strongly hierarchical kingdoms, may have influenced the development of the Shramanic Jain and Buddhist Sanghas, where monarchies tended toward Vedic Brahmanism. <laughs> Early life and marriage Siddhartha was brought up by his mother's younger sister, Mahapajapati. By tradition, he is said to have been destined by birth to the life of a prince and had three palaces for seasonal occupation built for him. His father, said to be King Suddhodana, wishing for his son to be a great king, is said to have shielded him from religious teachings and from knowledge of human suffering. While Suddhodana has traditionally been depicted as a king, and Siddhartha as his prince, more recent scholarship suggests the Shakya were in fact organized as a semi republican oligarchy rather than a monarchy. When he reached the age of 16, his father reputedly arranged his marriage to a cousin of the same age named Yasodhara. Pali, Yasodhara. According to the early Buddhist texts of several schools, and numerous post canonical accounts, she gave birth to a son, named Rahula. Siddhartha is said to have spent 29 years as a prince in Kapilavasta. Although his father ensured that Siddhartha was provided with everything he could want or need, Buddhist scriptures say that the future Buddha felt that material wealth was not life's ultimate goal. <inaudible> Renunciation and ascetic life At the age of 29, Siddhartha left his palace to meet his subjects. Despite his father's efforts to hide from him the sick, aged and suffering, Siddhartha was said to have seen an old man. When his charioteer Channa explained to him that all people grew old, the prince went on further trips beyond the palace. On these he encountered a diseased man, a decaying corpse, and an ascetic. These depressed him, and he initially strove to overcome aging, sickness, and death by living the life of an ascetic, accompanied by Channa and riding his horse Kanthaka, Gautama quit his palace for the life of a mendicant. It's said that, the horse's hooves were muffled by the gods, to prevent guards from knowing of his departure. Gautama initially went to Rajagaya and began his ascetic life by begging for alms in the street. After King Bimbisara's men recognized Siddhartha and the king learned of his quest, Bimbisara offered Siddhartha the throne. Siddhartha rejected the offer but promised to visit his kingdom of Magadha first, upon attaining enlightenment. He left Rajagaya and practiced under two hermit teachers of yogic meditation. After mastering the teachings of Alara Kalama SKR. Arata Kalama, he was asked by Kalama to succeed him. However, Gautama felt unsatisfied by the practice, and moved on to become a student of yoga with Yudaka Ramaputta SKR. Yudraka Ramaputra. With him he achieved high levels of meditative consciousness and was again asked to succeed his teacher. But, once more, he was not satisfied, and again moved on. Awakening According to the early Buddhist texts, after realizing that meditative dhyana was the right path to awakening, but that extreme asceticism didn't work, Gautama discovered what Buddhists know as being, the middle way a path of moderation away from the extremes of self-indulgence and self-mortification, or the Noble Eightfold Path, as described in the Dhammakakapavatana Sutta, which is regarded as the first discourse of the Buddha. In a famous incident, after becoming starved and weakened, he is said to have accepted milk and rice pudding from a village girl named Sujata. Such was his emaciated appearance that she wrongly believed him to be a spirit that had granted her a wish. Following this incident, Gautama was famously seated under a pipal tree, now known as the Bodhi tree, 
in Bodh Gaya, India, when he vowed never to arise until he had found the truth. Kaundinya and four other companions, believing that he had abandoned his search and become undisciplined, ceased to stay with him, and went to somewhere else. After a reputed 49 days of meditation, at the age of 35, he is said to have attained enlightenment, and became known as the Buddha or Awakened One. Buddha is also sometimes translated as the Enlightened One. According to some sutras of the Pali Canon, at the time of his awakening he realized complete insight into the Four Noble Truths, thereby attaining liberation from samsara, the endless cycle of rebirth, suffering and dying again. According to scholars, this story of the awakening and the stress on liberating insight is a later development in the Buddhist tradition, where the Buddha may have regarded the practice of dhyana as leading to nirvana and moksha. Nirvana is the extinguishing of the fires of desire, hatred, and ignorance, that keep the cycle of suffering and rebirth going. Nirvana is also regarded as the end of the world, in that no personal identity or boundaries of the mind remain. In such a state, a being is said to possess the ten characteristics, belonging to every Buddha, according to a story in the Ayakana Sutta Samyutta Nikaya v.1, a scripture found in the Pali and other canons. Immediately after his awakening, the Buddha debated whether or not he should teach the Dharma to others. He was concerned that humans were so overpowered by ignorance, greed and hatred that they could never recognize the path, which is subtle, deep and hard to grasp. However, in the story, Brahma Sahampati convinced him, arguing that at least some will understand it. The Buddha relented, and agreed to teach. <laughs> Formation of the Sangha After his awakening, the Buddha met Taphusa and Balaka, two merchant brothers from the city of Balk in what is currently Afghanistan, who became his first lay disciples. It is said that each was given hairs from his head, which are now claimed to be enshrined as relics in the Shui Dagon temple in Rangoon, Burma. The Buddha intended to visit Asita, and his former teachers, Alara Kalama and Yudaka Ramaputta, to explain his findings, but they had already died. He then travelled to the Deer Park near Varanasi Benares in northern India, where he set in motion what Buddhists call the Wheel of Dharma by delivering his first sermon to the five companions with whom he had sought enlightenment. Together with him, they formed the first Sangha, the company of Buddhist monks. All five become arahants, and within the first two months, with the conversion of Yasa and fifty-four of his friends, the number of such arahants is said to have grown to sixty. The conversion of three brothers named Kasapa followed, with their reputed 200, 300 and 500 disciples, respectively. This swelled the Sangha to more than 1,000. <laughs> Travels and teaching For the remaining 45 years of his life, the Buddha is said to have traveled in the Gangetic Plain, in what is now Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, and southern Nepal, teaching a diverse range of people, from nobles to servants, murderers such as Angulamala, and cannibals such as Alavaka. Although the Buddha's language remains unknown, it's likely that he taught in one or more of a variety of closely related Middle Indo-Aryan dialects, of which Pali may be a standardization. The Sangha traveled through the subcontinent, expounding the Dharma. This continued throughout the year, except during the four months of the Vasa rainy season when ascetics of all religions rarely traveled. One reason was that it was more difficult to do so without causing harm to animal life. At this time of year, the Sangha would retreat to monasteries, public parks or forests, where people would come to them. The first Vasana was spent at Varanasi when the Sangha was formed. After this, the Buddha kept a promise to travel to Rajagaya, capital of Magadha, to visit King Bimbisara. During this visit, Sariputta and Madhgalyayana were converted by Asaji, one of the first five disciples, after which they were to become the Buddha's two foremost followers. The Buddha spent the next three seasons at Veluvana Bamboo Grove Monastery in Rajagaya, the capital of Magadha. Upon hearing of his son's awakening, Sadodana sent, over a period, ten delegations to ask him to return to Kapilavasta. On the first nine occasions, the delegates failed to deliver the message and instead joined the Sangha to become Arahants. The tenth delegation, led by Kaludai, a childhood friend of Gautama's who also became an Arahant, however, delivered the message. Now two years after his awakening, the Buddha agreed to return, and made a two-month journey by foot to Kapilavasta, teaching the Dharma as he went. 
At his return, the royal palace prepared a midday meal, but the Sangha was making an alms round in Kapilavasta. Hearing this, Suddhodana approached his son, the Buddha, saying, Ours is the warrior lineage of Mahamasata, and not a single warrior has gone seeking alms. The Buddha is said to have replied, That is not the custom of your royal lineage. But it is the custom of my Buddha lineage. Several thousands of Buddhas have gone by seeking alms. Buddhist texts say that Suddhodana invited the Sangha into the palace for the meal, followed by a Dharma talk. After this he is said to have become a Sotapanna. During the visit, many members of the royal family joined the Sangha. The Buddha's cousins Ananda and Aniruddha became two of his five chief disciples. At the age of seven, his son Rahula also joined, and became one of his ten chief disciples. His half-brother Nanda also joined and became an arahant. Of the Buddha's disciples, Sariputta, Madhgalyayana, Mahakasyapa, Ananda and Aniruddha are believed to have been the five closest to him. His ten foremost disciples were reputedly completed by the quintet of Upali, Subhati, Rahula, Mahakakana and Punna. In the fifth Vasana, the Buddha was staying at Mahavana near Vasali when he heard news of the impending death of his father. He is said to have gone to Suddhodana and taught the Dharma, after which his father became an arahant. The king's death and cremation was to inspire the creation of an order of nuns. Buddhist texts record that the Buddha was reluctant to ordain women. His foster mother Maha Pajapati, for example, approached him, asking to join the Sangha, but he refused. Maha Pajapati, however, was so intent on the path of awakening that she led a group of royal Sakyan and Kolyan ladies, which followed the Sangha on a long journey to Rajagaya. In time, after Ananda championed their cause, the Buddha is said to have reconsidered and, five years after the formation of the Sangha, agreed to the ordination of women as nuns. He reasoned that males and females had an equal capacity for awakening. But he gave women additional rules to follow. Mahaparinirvana According to the Mahaparinibbana Sutta of the Pali Canon, at the age of 80, the Buddha announced that he would soon reach Parinirvana, or the final deathless state, and abandon his earthly body. After this, the Buddha ate his last meal, which he had received as an offering from a blacksmith named Kunda. Falling violently ill, Buddha instructed his attendant Ananda to convince Kunda that the meal eaten at his place had nothing to do with his passing and that his meal would be a source of the greatest merit as it provided the last meal for a Buddha. Metanando and von Hinuber argue that the Buddha died of mesenteric infarction, a symptom of old age, rather than food poisoning. The precise contents of the Buddha's final meal are not clear, due to variant scriptural traditions and ambiguity over the translation of certain significant terms. The Theravada tradition generally believes that the Buddha was offered some kind of pork, while the Mahayana tradition believes that the Buddha consumed some sort of truffle or other mushroom. These may reflect the different traditional views on Buddhist vegetarianism and the precepts for monks and nuns. Whaley suggests that Theravadins would take Sukaramadava, the contents of the Buddha's last meal, which can translate literally as pig soft, to mean soft flesh of a pig, or pig's soft food, that is, after Newman, a soft food favored by pigs, assumed to be a truffle. He argues also after Newman that as P land names tend to be local and dialectical, as there are several plants known to have suikara pig as part of their names, and as Pali Buddhism developed in an area remote from the Buddha's death, Sukaramadava could easily have been a type of plant whose local name was unknown to those in Pali regions. Specifically, local writers writing soon after the Buddha's death knew more about their flora than Theravadan commentator Buddhahosa who lived hundreds of years and hundreds of kilometers remote in time and space from the events described. Unaware that it may have been a local plant name and with no Theravadan prohibition against eating animal flesh, Theravadins would not have questioned the Buddha eating meat and interpreted the term accordingly. According to Buddhist tradition, the Buddha died at Kuzanara, present-day Kushinagar, India, which became a pilgrimage center. Ananda protested the Buddha's decision to enter Parinirvana in the abandoned jungles of Kuzanara of the Mala Kingdom. The Buddha, however, is said to have reminded Ananda how Kushinara was a land once ruled by a righteous wheel-turning king and the appropriate place for him to die. The Buddha then asked all the attendant bhikkhus to clarify any doubts or questions they had and cleared them all in a way which others could not do. They had none. According to Buddhist scriptures, he then finally entered Parinirvana. 
The Buddha's final words are reported to have been, "...all composite things sankara are perishable. Strive for your own liberation with diligence." Pali, Vayudama Sankara Apamadina Sampadatha. His body was cremated and the relics were placed in monuments or stupas, some of which are believed to have survived until the present. For example, the Temple of the Tooth or Dalada Malagawa in Sri Lanka is the place where what some believe to be the relic of the right tooth of Buddha is kept at present. According to the Pali historical chronicles of Sri Lanka, the Dipavamsa and Mahavamsa, the coronation of Emperor Asoka Pali, Asoka is 218 years after the death of the Buddha. According to two textual records in Chinese Shi ba bu lun and bu ji yi lun, the coronation of Emperor Asoka is 116 years after the death of the Buddha. Therefore, the time of Buddha's passing is either 486 BCE according to Theravada record or 383 BCE according to Mahayana record. However, the actual date traditionally accepted as the date of the Buddha's death in Theravada countries is 544 or 545 BCE, because the reign of Emperor Asoka was traditionally reckoned to be about 60 years earlier than current estimates. In Burmese Buddhist tradition, the date of the Buddha's death is the 13th of May 544 BCE, whereas in Thai tradition it is the 11th of March 545 BCE at his death. The Buddha is famously believed to have told his disciples to follow no leader. Mahakasyapa was chosen by the Sangha to be the chairman of the first Buddhist council, with the two chief disciples Madhgalyayana and Sariputta having died before the Buddha. While in the Buddha's days he was addressed by the very respected titles Buddha, Shakyamuni, Shakyasimha, Bhante and Bho, he was known after his Parinirvana Nirvana as Arahant, Bhagava, Bhagava, Bhagwan, Mahavira, Jina, Janendra, Sastar, Sugata, and most popularly in scriptures as Tathagata. Topic. Relics After his death, Buddha's cremation relics were divided amongst eight royal families and his disciples, centuries later they would be enshrined by King Ashoka into 84,000 stupas. Many supernatural legends surround the history of alleged relics as they accompanied the spread of Buddhism and gave legitimacy to rulers. Physical characteristics An extensive and colorful physical description of the Buddha has been laid down in scriptures. A Kshatriya by birth, he had military training in his upbringing, and by Shakyan tradition was required to pass tests to demonstrate his worthiness as a warrior in order to marry. He had a strong enough body to be noticed by one of the kings and was asked to join his army as a general. He is also believed by Buddhists to have the 32 signs of the great man. The Brahmin Sonadanda described him as handsome, good looking, and pleasing to the eye, with a most beautiful complexion. He has a godlike form and countenance, he is by no means unattractive. D. I. 115. It is wonderful, truly marvelous, how serene is the good Gautama's appearance, how clear and radiant his complexion, just as the golden jujube in autumn is clear and radiant, just as a palm tree fruit just loosened from the stalk is clear and radiant, just as an adornment of red gold wrought in a crucible by a skilled goldsmith, deftly beaten and laid on a yellow cloth shines, blazes and glitters, even so, the good Gautama's senses are calmed, his complexion is clear and radiant. A. I. 181. A disciple named Vakali, who later became an arahant, was so obsessed by the Buddha's physical presence that the Buddha is said to have felt impelled to tell him to desist, and to have reminded him that he should know the Buddha through the Dhamma and not through physical appearances. Although there are no extant representations of the Buddha in human form until around the 1st century CE see Buddhist art, descriptions of the physical characteristics of fully enlightened Buddhas are attributed to the Buddha in the Diga Nikaya's Lakana Sutta d. I. 142. In addition, the Buddha's physical appearance is described by Yasodhara to their son Rahula upon the Buddha's first post-enlightenment return to his former princely palace in the non-canonical Pali devotional hymn, Narasiha Gatha the lion of men. Among the 32 main characteristics it is mentioned that Buddha has blue eyes. Nine virtues 
Recollection of nine virtues attributed to the Buddha is a common Buddhist meditation and devotional practice called Buddhanismrta. The nine virtues are also among the forty Buddhist meditation subjects. The nine virtues of the Buddha appear throughout the Tipitaka, and include Bado, awakened Samasambado, perfectly self-awakened Via Karana Sampano, endowed with higher knowledge and ideal conduct. Sugato, well gone or well spoken. Lokavidu, wise in the knowledge of the many worlds. Anataro Purissa Dhamma Sarathi, unexcelled trainer of untrained people. Satthadeva Manasanam, teacher of gods and humans. Bhagavathi, the blessed one. Araham, worthy of homage. An arahant is one with taints destroyed, who has lived the holy life, done what had to be done, laid down the burden, reached the true goal, destroyed the fetters of being, and is completely liberated through final knowledge. Topic: <laughs> Teachings. Topic: <laughs> Use of Brahmanical motifs. In the Pali Canon, the Buddha uses many Brahmanical devices. For example, in Samyutta Nikaya 111, Majjhima Nikaya 92 and Vinaya I-246 of the Pali Canon, the Buddha praises the Agnihotra as the foremost sacrifice and the Gayatri Mantra as the foremost meter. Ajihadamukha Yanya Saviti Chandaso Mukham. Sacrifices have the Agnihotra as foremost, of meter, the foremost is the Savitri. Tracing the oldest teachings One method to obtain information on the oldest core of Buddhism is to compare the oldest versions of the Pali Canon and other texts, such as the surviving portions of Sarvastivada, Mulasarvastivada, Mahisasaka, Dharmaguptaka, and the Chinese Agamas. The reliability of these sources, and the possibility of drawing out a core of oldest teachings, is a matter of dispute. According to Vedder, inconsistencies remain, and other methods must be applied to resolve those inconsistencies. According to Schmidhausen, there are three positions held by scholars of Buddhism. Stress on the fundamental homogeneity and substantial authenticity of at least a considerable part of the Nikkeic materials. Skepticism with regard to the possibility of retrieving the doctrine of earliest Buddhism. Cautious optimism in this respect. Dhyana and insight A core problem in the study of early Buddhism is the relation between dhyana and insight. Schmidhausen notes that the mention of the Four Noble Truths is constituting liberating insight, which is attained after mastering the rupa jhanas, is a later addition to texts such as Majjhima Nikaya 36. Earliest Buddhism According to Tilman Vedder, the core of earliest Buddhism is the practice of dhyana, as a workable alternative to painful ascetic practices. Bronckhorst agrees that dhyana was a Buddhist invention, whereas Norman notes that, the Buddha's way to release was by means of meditative practices. Discriminating insight into transiency as a separate path to liberation was a later development. According to the Mahasakakasutta, from the fourth jhana the Buddha gained bodhi. Yet, it is not clear what he was awakened to. According to Schmidhausen and Bronckhorst, liberating insight is a later addition to this text, and reflects a later development and understanding in early Buddhism. The mentioning of the four truths as constituting liberating insight introduces a logical problem, since the Four Truths depict a linear path of practice, the knowledge of which is in itself not depicted as being liberating. T. He do not teach that one is released by knowing the Four Noble Truths, but by practicing the Fourth Noble Truth, the Eightfold Path, which culminates in right samadhi. Although, Nibbana Sanskrit, nirvana is the common term for the desired goal of this practice. Many other terms can be found throughout the Nikayas, which are not specified. According to Vedder, the description of the Buddhist path may initially have been as simple as the term, the middle way. In time, this short description was elaborated, resulting in the description of the Eightfold Path. According to both Bronckhorst and Anderson, the Four Truths became a substitution for prajna, or liberating insight. 
In the suttas in those texts where liberating insight was preceded by the four jhanas. According to Bronckhorst, the four truths may not have been formulated in earliest Buddhism, and did not serve in earliest Buddhism as a description of liberating insight. Gautama's teachings may have been personal, adjusted to the need of each person. The three marks of existence may reflect Upanishadic or other influences. K. R. Norman supposes that these terms were already in use at the Buddha's time, and were familiar to his listeners. The Brahma Vihara was in origin probably a Brahmanic term, but its usage may have been common to the Sramana traditions. <laughs> Later developments In time, liberating insight became an essential feature of the Buddhist tradition. The following teachings, which are commonly seen as essential to Buddhism, are later formulations which form part of the explanatory framework of this liberating insight. The Four Noble Truths, that suffering is an ingrained part of existence, that the origin of suffering is craving for sensuality, acquisition of identity, and fear of annihilation, that suffering can be ended, and that following the Noble Eightfold Path is the means to accomplish this. The Noble Eightfold Path, right view, right intention, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. Dependent origination, the mind creates suffering as a natural product of a complex process. Other religions Some Hindus regard Gautama as the ninth avatar of Vishnu. However, Buddha's teachings deny the authority of the Vedas and the concepts of Brahman Atman. Consequently Buddhism is generally classified as a Nastika school heterodox, literally, it is not so. In contrast to the six orthodox schools of Hinduism, the Buddha is regarded as a prophet by the minority Ahmadiyya sect of Muslims. A sect considered deviant and rejected as apostate by mainstream Islam. Some early Chinese Taoist Buddhists thought the Buddha to be a reincarnation of Laozi. Disciples of the Sao Dai religion worship the Buddha as a major religious teacher. His image can be found in both their holy see and on the home altar. He is revealed during communication with divine beings as son of their supreme being, God the Father, together with other major religious teachers and founders like Jesus, Laozi, and Confucius. The Christian saint Husafat is based on the Buddha. The name comes from the Sanskrit Bodhisattva via Arabic Buddhasaf and Georgian Iodasaf. The only story in which Saint Husafat appears, Barlam and Husafat, is based on the life of the Buddha. Husafat was included in earlier editions of the Roman Martyrology feast day the 27th of November, though not in the Roman Missal, and in the Eastern Orthodox Church liturgical calendar the 26th of August. In the ancient Gnostic sect of Manichaeism, the Buddha is listed among the prophets who preached the word of God before Mani. In Sikhism, Buddha is mentioned as the 23rd avatar of Vishnu in the Shobhas Avatar, a composition in Dasam Granth traditionally and historically attributed to Guru Gobind Singh. In the Baha'i faith, Buddha is regarded as one of the manifestations of God. Topic: <laughs> Depiction in arts and media. Films Little Buddha, a 1994 film by Bernardo Bertolucci Prem Sanyas, a 1925 silent film, directed by Franz Austin and Hamansu Rai Television Buddha, a 2013 mythological drama on ZTV The Buddha 2010 PBS documentary by award-winning filmmaker David Grubin and narrated by Richard Gera Literature The Light of Asia, an 1879 epic poem by Edwin Arnold Buddha, a manga series that ran from 1972 to 1983 by Osamu Tezuka Siddhartha novel by Hermann Hesse, written in German in 1922 Lord of Light, a novel by Roger Zelazny depicts a man in a far future earth colony who takes on the name and teachings of the Buddha Creation, a 1981 novel by Gore Vidal, includes the Buddha as one of the religious figures that the main character encounters. Musakaruna Nadi, a 2010 oratorio by Dinesh Subhasinga. The Light of Asia, an 1886 oratorio by Dudley Buck. Topic: <laughs> Painting. Shusen Shaka, a Zen painting motif. See also 
List of founders of religious traditions. Equals equals notes. <laughs>